Ahoy everyone, I'm Tim here at Digital Armor, and today I'm going to be bringing you a brand new Commander deck tech. Wasitora, Nekuro Queen, is leading this really fun Dragon Tribal deck. So on the other side, we'll be heading straight into Jund territory. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in! Dragons have been around since the dawn of magic. The mighty Shivan Dragon went toe to toe, or wing to wing, with the Sengir Vampire and the Serra Angel. Then Legend Set came around and we were given five Elder Dragons, the foundations of our beloved format. In 2017, Wizards went tribal with their Commander Precons and Dragons once again reared their heads. So it's about time that I showed you my Dragon Tribal Commander deck. Before we get started though, time for our upkeep step. There's a few free and easy ways that you can help to support the channel which would really mean a lot. There's hitting that subscribe button, there's ringing that bell notification icon, and there's leaving a comment down below. Another way is by heading over to the channel sponsor, Arcane Cards. They're an awesome online card store stocking MTG singles and all manner of sealed product. The link is down in the description, as well as a discount code to get 10% off your first order. So with that said, let's head to the main phase. Some of you may be wondering why I chose Wasatora as my commander. Why not go 5 colour with the Ur-Dragon or his Scion? Well I've got three words for you. Cat dragon babies. It's that simple. Also, limiting myself to three colours rather than five doesn't really take much away. We lose access to around 40 dragons, but still have 132 to choose from. That's not to say five colour dragons isn't a great choice, it's just a deck tech for another time. Starting out with our commander, Wasatora. One way to build her is to take advantage of her combat ability, giving her unblockable with cards like Glaring Spotlight or some form of evasion like Mountain Walk with cards like Burrowing. We can also deter opponents from blocking her with cards like Basilisk Collar giving her Death Touch. This all seems like a lot of hoops to jump through for a 3-3 three, three token once a turn, so it's a straight up battle cruiser of a Dragon Tribal deck I'm bringing you. Getting the ball rolling with, you've guessed it, some dragons, Jundi dragons to be specific. Carthus, Tyrant of Jund, is 7 mana, has flying, a uh, given for dragons so I won't mention it again, and haste. It also steals every dragon from around the table and gives them all haste. Oh, and did I mention it's a 7-7? Seven, seven? Daragaz, reincarnated, is another 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. On theme or what? Uh, it comes with haste and trample and does a neat little egg trick when it gets kind of suspended for three turns. Vivictus Asmadi is not only dire, he's also one of the elder dragons. He has a crazy warp world-esque ability which can really wreak havoc on the table. Finally there's an absolute classic, the broodmate dragon just had to be included for the nostalgia. Because she brings along her fellow dragon, we get 8 power for our 7 mana. Into the 2 colour dragons with Ataka, World Render, Trample and giving all of our attacking dragons double strike. Powerful stuff. Colligan, the Storm's Fury, has a crazy ability that gives all our creatures plus 1 plus 0 for each dragon that's attacking. So if 4 dragons attack, they each get plus 4 plus 0. Then there's the elder version of each. Dragon Lord Ataka deals 5 damage to any number of creatures or planeswalker with its ETB effect. Being able to target planeswalkers is really handy. Dragon Lord Colligan is a haste anthem on a 6 5 body. His second ability is Voiding Commander, though. Other dual colour dragons I've included are Savage Ventmore, which gives a great 6 mana boost every time it attacks. Bladewing the Risen recurs Dragon from our graveyard straight back into play and has an activated Anthem effect too. 
Dragon Broodmother puts out a baby 1-1 dragon during every upkeep. Not just our own, which is crazy. It has Devour 2 as well, so you can sack each one to the next for a really huge token by the time the turn gets back around to you. I couldn't build a dragon deck without including the Spirit Dragon cycle from Kamigawa. Kakusho, the Evening Star, it is superb in Commander. If you're lucky, you'll be gaining a ton of life and chipping away at your opponents all in one go. Ryusai is a, like pseudo board wipe, taking out any land based creatures with power 5 or less. Jugan, the Rising Star, is perhaps the weakest out of the three, but I'm not going to complain about getting 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Boneyard Scourge is the only mono black dragon in the deck. Being able to pay 2 to recur it when another dragon dies is invaluable in long games. Destructor Dragon is a bit handy. When it dies, we can take out a non-creature permanent, and that includes lands. Herd Chaser Dragon is a Megamorpher. We can play it face down for 3, and then pay 7 to flip it. And when we do, all our other dragons get a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. Tyrant's Familiar has Lieutenants, so as long as we control Wasatora, it gets plus 2 plus 2, and deals 7 damage to target creature when it attacks. A new card from Commander 2018 now. Nesting Dragon is seriously fun. Its landfall trigger gives us a 0-2 token, and when that dies it's replaced by a 2-2 with fire breathing. Ferex Bladewing feels like the spiritual successor to the Broodmate. If we kick it, then we get a 4-4 token. Except this time, it's legendary, and called Karox. Furyborn Hellkite is definitely a card for your second main phase, potentially coming down as a 12-12. The Scourge of Valkas becomes a bigger and bigger Scourge the more dragons we cast and keep in play, really ramping up the damage to a creature or player. Lathalus should be producing a 5-5 dragon for us most turns once we get going, and the Power Anthem is a nice addition too. The Hellkite Charger's ability is a bit pricey, but with a board full of dragons, it could mean game over for one or even two opponents. Now a card that does exactly what it says on the tin. Got an artifact you need taken care of? Horde Smelter is your dragon. Stepping up the flashiness now, there's a few dragons with stunning promo versions. Glorybringer, recent standard powerhouse, makes an appearance. Thunderbreak Region gives a bit of pushback against being targeted, and Bay of Fire Dragon can be devastating if it makes contact with an opponent. And finally for the dragons, Utvara Hellkite is bonkers, giving us a 6-6 token whenever any dragon we control attacks. Things can get out of hand fast. What dragon deck wouldn't be complete without a bit of Sarkhan? Or three? So the OG leads the way with a great token making ultimate that isn't unreasonable to get to. Fireblood switches the numbers up, giving us four five fives instead, and a helpful mana boost too. Dragon Soul is from the M19 Planeswalker deck, and his ultimate is the ultimate. Shoot out as many dragons as you like, and splurge them straight onto your playmat. And to round this Sarkin section out nicely, we have his Triumph, which tutors us one dragon to our hand. Shenanigan time now. Dragon Tempest gives all of our dragons haste, and fires off a shot whenever one enters the battlefield. Warstorm Surge does a similar trick, except it's just based on that one creature's power. Palace Siege is some awesome enchantment based recursion, and Frontier Siege is either ramp, or just fighting. I couldn't build this deck without throwing in some non-dragon dudes who love their dragons. Dragon Master Outcast, Dragon Speaker Shaman, and Dragon Lord Servant all do their own things to help the cause. Stryonic Resonator is a spicy include in here. Copying any of our triggered abilities can get cray cray. So many of our dragons have these abilities, they're the ones starting with when or whenever. Crucible of Fire is an auto-include for any self-respecting dragon deck, and I think that Dragon's Horde from M19 is too, with its card draw and ramp. Which leads us nicely 
into the card draw and ramp section. Elemental Bond should be triggering very regularly for us. Cultivate, Traverse and the good old Reach are all present and correct. It wouldn't be Commander without a good old Soul Ring, would it? And then there's the Sphere 2. Zendikar Resurgent does a double shift providing ramp and draw. Rishkar's expertise can net us a lot of cards, but we won't be casting many dragons with its second ability. I really like slotting the Beastery into decks with green. Scry 1 every turn is rad, and paying 1 to draw is no probs. Soul's Majesty is like a slimmed down Rishkar's expertise. There wouldn't be a tribal deck without some tribal effects. Urza leads the way with his Incubator, reducing our dragon costs by 2. Herald's Horn is another cost reducer and lets us pseudo scry. Fires of Yavimau uh, isn't tribal, but it is a haste anthem, so fits nicely into this section. Now for some destruction. Kicking off with Maelstrom Pulse, not a killer in Commander as it was in Standard back in the day. It's still cool, you could wipe out multiple soul rings in one fell swoop. I am considering swapping out, out for an Assassin's Trophy though, if I ever get one. Lava Lanch was just reprinted in C18 and is almost a board wipe, and so cool that it targets Planeswalkers too. Crux of Fate is the board wipe of choice for any self-respecting dragon deck. Finally, with the best of the rest, it's Junt Charm, then Eternal Witness, because we're in green, and then Journey to Eternity, which is also recursion, and even more after it's flipped into a land. Speaking of lands, here's the mana base. Oh, that was a smooth transition. It's almost like I planned all of it. Command Tower leads the way as always, followed by the two doodars of the Spirit Dragon. There's a whole host of jewel lands in here, including the hot new Battle Bond ones, the cycling ones from Amonkhet, a couple of pain lands, and some of the tapped fetches too. Command Beacon helps with our expensive commander getting more expensive after each tax. And this is a deck which I've actually included Temple of the False God too. I've rounded this out with basics. 6 forests, 7 mountains and 5 swamps. And there you have it, that was my Wasatora Dragon Tribal Commander deck tech. You can find links to the deck list down in the description to both MTG Goldfish and to Tapped Out. If you haven't already, please remember to hit the thumbs up button and also consider becoming a patron of the channel. The link will be up in the top right hand corner. Don't forget to check out Arcane Cards for your MTG singles and remember that discount code down in the description as well. Well, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers!